So this is Jim with Fustini's for, or Friday with Fustini's on May 1st. Happy May Day, everybody. I'm here quarantined with my family and my good friends in the back here. I think you can see a nice uh, pantry. Whoops, there you go. A nice pantry full of Fustini's oils and vinegars, and we might have snuck in a little iron fish maple syrup, bourbon flavored maple syrup. Um, welcome. This is our third uh, Fustini's on Fridays. Uh, our goal here is to bring you fresh, uh, easy to make ideas for, for the kitchen while you're quarantined. We're going to show, I think, three recipes. We're obviously all remote, social distancing by hundreds of miles. We wish we could be together to do this but we just can't do it, obviously. So we wanna show you some fun, easy to make recipes. And we're gonna to try to do it with this technology. Um, we've got the help of some young people. So bear with us, we're starting to get through. We, we think maybe we've faced all the technical challenges that we're gonna see, but who knows <laughs> what's gonna to happen today. We'll be about 20 minutes. Uh, we'll show, I believe, three recipes. Uh, we'll go to Nancy in Ann Arbor, then Denise in Holland, and then I'll wrap it up. And I'll, I'll also include some uh, announcements on discounts for the products that the two of them use, and uh, some uh, reminders on Mother's Day gifting. So with that, um, let me turn it over to Nancy in Ann Arbor. Hi, thanks, Jim. We just see both of you again in the same room together. Topic this week for Fustini Fridays is vegetarian dishes. And the dish that I chose today is one that's called lentil dal. It's a very warm, comforting dish. And I figured in these times of stress, that would be a great thing to pick. Lentil dal is served often over rice, and normally you would serve it over a basmati rice. That would be my first choice. But as you well know, the grocery stores are low on things. So they were out of basmati rice. So I picked up some ginger rice, coconut ginger, and that's what we'll be using today. It, it pairs beautifully with the flavors um, and aromatics that you'll find in the lentil dal. So like any rice, you're gonna start with water, but unlike any rice, we're going to add coconut balsamic. So this book is an absolutely flavorful. Um, it's an Asian, excuse me, not Asian, Indian flavor, tropical. Put that right in to the water. So about a tablespoon goes in the water. And we'll bring the water in. To that, I'm going to add a little bit of coconut oil. We'll get that, bring that to a boil. Drum roll. Now it's boiling. So imagine that that's boiling. We'll add the rice to that. Put the cover on and let that cook for 20 minutes. So while our rice is cooking, we're going to start the lentil dal. So lentil dal is, as I mentioned, a very comforting dish. It's a very traditional dish that you would find in India. Common as can be, as common as potatoes are here in the United States. There are many, many kinds of lentil dal and it's normally made up with lentils, spices and tomatoes. But it can also be made up with any other kind of legume that does not need to be soaked. So you could use split pea, you could use mung beans, you could use pigeon peas. And those would all be good substitutes to create a lentil dal. If you went online, I think you'll find that there's just a plethora of recipes out there for lentil dal. But the one I'm using today, we're going to start with onions and garlic. So in, into the mini food processor, I would start with the, the ginger. And a good way to take the skin off of the ginger is to just bring a spoon. Well, this has been in the freezer, I'll be honest, which is a great way to keep ginger root and the skin is not coming off very easily. But if this was dry, 
you just scrape the scrape off with this takes the skin off the ginger. We'll also take a, a garlic clove. So this recipe calls for four garlic. It's quite pungent on the garlic, which is fabulous. A good way to take the skin off is smash it with your knife. That cracks skin easy to get off. That's a very quick, easy way to take the outer skin off of your garlic. Four garlic cloves, a good inch of ginger. We'll put that in the food processor, little mini guy here. You see that's nicely minced up. Feel free to do it by hand if your knife skills are something you, you want to practice or if you just want to get your aggression out by chopping up garlic. There's any way you want to do it is fine. So we're going to saute the garlic and the onions into olive oil. The olive oil that I chose today is a cilantro onion olive oil. While I'm doing cooking up this recipe, feel free to shout out in, in the comments where you're from so we know who's listening out there. We got that, got that a little hot there, whoa. Hey, so Nancy, it's Dahl, D-A-L. That's a good question, Jim. Dahl, there are several different spellings that in researching this that I found out. Dahl is D-A-L or D-A-H-L or D-A-A-L. So there's quite a variety. I got, got my oil a little hot because I started it early. So we'll get those toasting up. Uh, get my burner down. Sorry, guys. And the spices that I'm putting into this is also a, a variety that you can add. We're going to put those in and heat the, heat the spices up so that it releases the flavor there. Hey, Nancy, there's a question about how much ginger you're using in this. Could you repeat the the uh, size, the portion size? Yes, I used about a, I used about a, a half an inch of ginger and four garlics. And those will be in the recipes that we will have listed on the website, okay? So we're sauteing that up to get the flavor, flavor going in that. The, the, the spices I put in were cumin, red pepper flakes, and a little bit of curry. This happens to be a, a Trinidad curry, but there's lots of different curry flavors out there. If you like things hot, feel free to kick it up and use a hot curry in it. That'll work also. Uh, the onions. So we'll take the onions, chopped up onions. You need about a cup of those. Too bad this isn't smell television, but I think you'd love the aroma. Sorry, you can smell the onions cooking, and of course, garlic is everybody's favorite. Makes your mouth water there. Hey, so, so I Nancy, earlier, the doll doll can be used Nancy, made up in lots of different ways. Yeah, Nancy, yeah. if so, if someone doesn't have the cilantro and onion uh, olive oil. Can you recommend a substitute? Well, first off, you could start with one of our fabulous select olive oils. So just the plain, great, plain olive, perfect. I probably would be the two that I would go between the cilantro and onion, garlic. You could also use leek or just a plain select olive oil. Once this has cooked a little, we're gonna add in the tomatoes. I use canned tomatoes. You can use fresh tomatoes. You can use um, fire roll tomatoes with just diced tomatoes. And in my pantry, I had olive oil and garlic. So another layer of garlic is in there. We'll get this cooking for about five minutes. And then we're going to add to that our lentils, our water, and the cauliflower. So this specific dal, which is not traditional to everyone, uses cauliflower. And one of the reasons that I like that is that it gives it a nice texture. 
So Dahl is, is considered a stew. In fact, the word Dahl can be used as an adjective, excuse me, an adjective, or it can also mean something like a stew. So it has multiple multi purposes that you, the way you use it and the way that it's spelled and also the way it's pronounced. So this dal, which is a stew, is made with cauliflower, lentils, tomatoes, onions, garlic. So we're gonna use chopped up cauliflower. If, you, if your pantry held a little bit of cauliflower and carrots, why not add both of those? So this would have been simmering for about five minutes. We're gonna add the cauliflower to that, along with the lentils. And the water. And the recipe will be listed on the website. You can get all these details, but it really is a very simple recipe to make up. We'll bring that to a boil and put the lid on and that'll cook for 35 minutes. Okay, so while that's cooking, we've got our rice that's been cooking in the back. And I, I think I mentioned, yeah, we'll simmer that for 35 minutes if I didn't say that already. I've given you a couple different varieties you can use in the oils. The, bas the coconut rice, wouldn't have to have the coconut balsamic. You could also add a lemon balsamic to that. And I think that would make a nice addition to the rice with the lentil that we're talking the, that we're talking about. So I made some up earlier in the day so we could look at it. I've got the, the rice cooked up. So this is the coconut ginger rice that we've made up here. And then the dal here, as you can see, it's got, it's full of flavor. It's got, uh, cauliflower in it, tomatoes, lentils, that goes right over the top. And then we're going to put some cilantro over the top of that. And a nice squeeze of uh, lime here. You can, one of the tricks I learned was to just take a fork and I learned this it, to squeeze it because I happen to be plagued with a little arthritis in my hands which makes squeezing the lime hard. So put, just stick a fork right into it and twist, and that gives you an easy way to squeeze lime on top of that. Next presentation pretty there. Let's see, let me give a taste to it and see, we'll mix that in a little. There's the lime, but the cilantro pops through that we cook the onions in. The coconut from the rice is just a delight. A couple different variations to this. If you wanted to add more texture or more protein or more vegetables, you can add in shredded carrot. You could put some raisins in this, chop up some almonds or some cashews, or even dice up some um, apricots to go on top of that. And that is lentil doll made Nancy style. So Nancy, Denise, I don't think you'd have- over to you. Nancy, a quick question. I don't think you'd have any leftovers there. It looks fantastic. But if you if you did, um, is this something you can refrigerate or freeze? You know what, Jim? It refrigerates great for three to five days, but it, I often will freeze it because I do like to make a big batch and it's easy to pull out and you can freeze oh, nice. that and reheat it. Yep. Good question. Perfect. Thanks. Denise, I think you're up next and we're going to make vegetable lasagna with you. Yes, we are. Thanks, Nancy. Um, so I'm just going to adjust my camera a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. So um, there's two different um, ways that you can put a lasagna, a vegetable lasagna together, and I'm going to show you both of them. So over here, I started with my filling. And I'm going to use this when I, as I make another one, if that makes sense. So in my pan, I'm going to put the Herbs to Provence olive oil. And if you don't have the Herbs to Provence, feel free to use the Tuscan or the garlic, the leek, any of those. So we're gonna get our pan nice and hot. And into that, we're gonna add some sliced up mushrooms. 
I have both um, button mushrooms and white mushrooms. So we're gonna put those in there and saute them. And what you wanna do is make sure that um, they're not touching. So all the moisture comes out of the mushrooms that are in there. So while that's going, I'm gonna show you a couple, a different way to make just the standard lasagna. So in my pan, I have, I'm gonna put a layer of sauce that I made earlier. So just to coat the bottom. And then get that nice and coated. So then I have my noodles that I've already cooked and cooled. And I'm going to lay those out. One more. All right. So to my noodles, I am going to add some of my filling and my cheese. So I discovered yesterday that if you don't have ricotta cheese, because like Nancy said, for some reason the stores are out of some unusual things at times. I was quite surprised that there was no ricotta cheese at the grocery store and I really didn't want to go to another store and find some. So I Googled it and you can use cream cheese. And then I actually had a little goat cheese to use up. So I combined the two. So there's goat cheese and cream cheese in this mixture. So if you don't have ricotta or, I know a lot of times people use um, the other cheese. What is it? Oh shoot. I don't buy it because I don't like it. Um, anyway, the people use in lasagnas, but I don't like the texture, so I don't buy it much. Cottage cheese, that's it, sorry. Um, so I usually buy the ricotta, but since they were out of it, we've made this. So I've got a layer on, on these noodles. And then Excuse me, my mushrooms are getting done. Let me give them a stir. And then to my mushrooms, I'm going to add some cut up onion. And some cut up green pepper. And some cut up zucchini. Yes, mom, I will be eating zucchini. This one of the things growing up I was not a fan of. So I'm sure mom is watching along with her, um, her Lynnbrook circle ladies. So we can't really tell who is watching. So if you are able just to give a shout out, that would be great. I know that I've heard from several people. Hey, we'll hey no, no, that, uh, little shout out to uh, Tracy and Daniel Jenkins and uh, Bill the Whopper, um, <laughs> Mary, Mary Wakefield. We've got a nice group of, of folks following us. Um, and, and they're not and, even the same last names because usually isn't it? <laughs> we just our yeah, family. isn't that interesting? And they're listening to someone whose parents, I believe, live in Wisconsin who couldn't remember the name of a certain cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. Go figure. All right. So I've added the zucchini, mushrooms, onion that I cooked up previously on top of that cheese. And I'm just going to add a little more cheese. And this is just a Parmesan. I was telling a friend that I was making these um, 
basically a lasagna pinwheel. And she was like, oh, I love that because then you're just getting the exact right amount of portion that you need. So now that I've got all my stuff on there, I'm going to very carefully roll up my pinwheel and then seam side down. I'm gonna place that in that pan of sauce. Oh, let's get this one done. And we'll do this last one. And obviously you can use whatever veggies you have or that are in season. I've got a little ripped. No matter, we're gonna cover it with cheese or with a sauce and cheese anyway, right? Stick that right in there. So then basically we're gonna take some of our mozzarella cheese. Oh, I actually need more sauce here, sorry. So we're gonna just layer some more sauce on there. And then the cheese. You know, I'd have the, the actual portion size, but you know, this kind of cheese, you can be generous, right? So, and then I should have made one more and that would have filled the pan. But so those are your lasagna rolls, which is just a different way of making it. My filling is just about done here. One thing I did forget that it was in there, I forgot to add is some chopped up spinach. So that just needs to go in and wilt. So Denise, that's with the herbs de Provence olive oil and the thyme balsamic vinegar. Did you yes. mention, are there some rep uh, substitutes that customers could use yes. if they don't have those? So if you don't have the herbs Provence, you can use the Tuscan herb, you can use garlic, um, even leek would be unique, um, basil definitely. Um, and then once this all gets cooked down, I'm going to deglaze with the thyme balsamic. It'll pick up all those bits of pieces and pieces of flavor. So that's what I'm going to deglaze my pan with. And then I just, I have all the ingredients to make just the traditional standard side or standard, but the traditional type of lasagna. So I didn't know if people had any questions. I have some basil here that I'm just gonna chiffonade. And we'll use that as a garnish. So we'll garnish those with it. And this is coming along nicely. So I'm just going to take some of our pine balsamic. And if you don't have the thyme balsamic, you could use oregano. You could use just the 12 year white. I tend to like to use a white balsamic just because then it doesn't make your ingredients all dark. It keeps them nice and bright. So traditional lasagna. We're going to start with sauce again in the bottom of the pan. And then I don't know if you've ever played with these, but these are the, the bakeless noodles. Or I'm sorry, not bakeless, boil, boil free, boil less. I'm going to put those in the bottom of the pan. And then I'm going to do my cheese. So is anybody saying, um, hey, this is a good question. So what? No, they're, they're they're actually asking what your address is so they can come over and join you for dinner. It looks terrific. 
Um, no, I was going to ask with it being May and springtime, just what your favorite spring produce that you're looking forward to enjoying this time of year. Because we're putting a whole bunch of recipes out there and I would love to be able to, to put it with things that you guys really like. So on top of the cheese, I'm putting more cheese. And then I'm gonna take some of this filling and layer that in there. Once the spinach has gotten all softened. So of course, Denise, we got the asparagus comment and, uh, but you know, we, to what Denise asked for, we really would like your feedback, try to make it, this thing as interactive as possible. So if you've got some spring vegetables, you're trying to work up and need a little help with, just shoot us a comment here and we'll respond. Definitely. I think we've, um, you know, we've been at home and we've come up with ideas for the last month or so, and we'd love to know what you guys want to make or recipes for that. So please shout us, shout out to us. All right, so we're getting there. I think ricotta cheese spreads a little easier. I had it sitting out for an hour, but it's still really stiff. How about a way, Denise, to integrate morel mushrooms for those that are out there uh, foraging morels? Definitely. Yeah, that would actually be better than, you know, the button mushrooms I used. That would just give it an amazing flavor. And then you might even want to go with like our sage and wild mushroom olive oil. All right. I didn't say it had to be pretty, right? Another layer. More filling on there. More sauce. And then just to top it off, we're gonna do another layer of noodles. And because these are kind of small, I've kind of moved around where the, where the break was for them. So you can just use your knife and cut them. All right. And then we're gonna do a little more sauce. And a little more cheese. Because you can. And then I'm gonna grate some some parmesan over top of the mozzarella. And then for both of these, you would cover them with foil and bake them for 20 minutes and then remove the foil and bake them for another 20 minutes until they're nice and bubbly. So this is beforehand. And then I pulled this out of the oven about 30 minutes ago, like right when we started with the live. And I'm just gonna cut up some more basil And there you go. And what I forgot to mention is throughout, I do do our Tuscan, organic Tuscan spices. I, I really like those. And it's a great way to add flavor real fast, especially when you don't have all the fresh herbs that you need. All right, I think that's it. That's super, Denise. Both those dishes looked fantastic, thanks to uh, Every, thanks to you, Denise. Thanks to you, Nancy, for your contributions. We got the doll. We got the veggie lasagna. Um, let me um, 
wrap up here. So the item that you saw Denise and Nancy demonstrate today are available online for sale at a 15% discount. They're gonna be called, I believe, Denise's Picks and Nancy's Picks. They'll be in the new product section under shop. So you'll be able to find them there. They're live right now and they'll be available through Thursday of next week, the 7th of May. Um, also, for all of you who uh, are ordering online, remember to add in a complimentary little 60 milliliter uh, bottle that we're providing while the stores are closed. Any oil and vinegar that you select. I also want to point out for those of you that are close to one of our stores in Michigan that we're expanding our uh, curbside pickup service. So starting tomorrow, we'll be open in the afternoons for curbside pickup from uh, 11 to 4 tomorrow, Saturday, and then noon to 4 Tuesdays and Thursdays each week. We are starting to re-engage staff to help us bottle and serve you. So I expect that our curbside service will expand as we get more staff and we're able to handle more of your uh, more of your requests. So that's pretty exciting for us. It's uh, been 38 days since the stores closed and to be able to get staff safely back into the stores to uh, serve you and produce oil and vinegars is a really good feeling for us. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is Mother's Day. Uh, we make, Fustines makes for a great gift for Mother's Day. So what I would recommend is please, if you want to do something for mom and you want to have us ship it, I'd highly recommend you get online today and order mom's gift. Uh, we will ship, we will put priority on today's orders to ship on Monday. Um, so in most locations, if the, if the ground service is reliable, uh, it'll show up by the weekend. So thanks again for joining us. I don't think we had any technical snafus, which is awesome. <laughs> And we really appreciate you joining us. Check our recipes and recipe videos out uh, online. And we will see you next Friday. Thank you.